So here's my current regret bringing home. Um, quick rundown. It's a 15 kW. Um, even though it has a Scummins Onan tag on it. It's a, actually a Thermal King with a Stanford alt, PMG alternator on it. And a Suzu 2.2 liter diesel on it. I mean, freaking pig and shit right here. The one thing I think is weird because, you know, Thermal King, they're like, no, oh, we, we make uh, condenser coils. We'll just put one on generator. It work. So, I don't know what to do with that. But I am going to drain the cooling system. The one thing, interesting thing I noticed about this guy is number one, the custom stainless steel exhaust and ultra low flow uh, exhaust because you want to make sure you get the lowest flow for the low end power. Um, what else about this? Oh, all the fuel lines are air brake lines. Um, I, I don't know where to go with that. I guess they're good. Um, but anyway, let me step back and actually talk about what this is. And why it's set up the way it is. This is actually uh, designed to fit in between the frame rails of a container dolly trailer to run, like, you know, the reefer, like if it's a refrigerant trailer or temperature controlled, whatever. This sits underneath the frame rails. This hangs off, to, that's the tank for it, the freaking 80 gallon tank for a 15 kW. And it sits off to one side and uh, makes it go over them. Uh, I don't know what year this is, but one a couple things I know about it is it looks like it has an oil bath air filter. The only thing I've done to this thing was look inside the box to make sure that there's no rat's nest in there and wash it off because it was full of rat shit. Um, anyway, I'm getting lost. Um, has a uh, five gallon oil pan on it for those, you know, when you forget it's running and your refuel guy just goes by once a, every couple days and tops it off and you ignore it. Um, so I did get this off of Craigslist. The guy fired it for me for about 30 seconds. He had a chain on top of them, sitting on top of the motor. I was like all scared that I was going to go into the, the fan. There might be an issue with the motor, but I don't think so. I think it's just because it's sat. It needs to get hot and get its hair pulled on. Um, it was smoking a little bit, but I've seen worse. Um, so, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, it has a fuel heater on it. I've never seen one of those before. So, I uh, need to get an oil filter because it has a pinhole in it. Um, this is right now set up for three phase 480. Since it's a 12 leave alternator, we could restrap this down to um, 12240, but it has a Bill Honkin voltage regulator in there, old, I call them uh, transformer type, or some people call them mechanical transform, or voltage regulators, but it has a big Honkin voltage regulator in there that I'm going to replace with this guy. Oh yeah, by the way, I can't find fuck all for any type of um, uh, manual for any of this. I don't know what kind of... I know that's a 2.2 liter Isuzu. I've tried looking up that model number. The 15 YD. The YD is actually the frame size of the alternator. Can't find nothing on it. I've tried looking up the... This guy... All this stuff, I can't find nothing on it. You know, so super secret squirrel here. Anywho, it's um, I'm rambling on. So, but here's my new project. Like it's uh, the heaviest built 15 kW I've ever seen in my life. But this is gonna be most likely the new home standby. Anyway, you guys have a great one. See you in a minute, actually. So it's the following day. Um, I got it restrapped the, in the box. It's 12 wire lead alternator. You can find videos on how to do it anywhere. 
basically you connect a bunch of wires to get make a couple pigtails or uh, you bond uh, two sets of four wires together and then take or two sets of wires for L1, L2, and then you strap one of those uh, bundles of four wires goes to for the neutral. So we got the AVR working and uh, sitting there working on it had about let's say not even like 30 amps on it at 240 volts that's um shit that's somewhere around like 5kw i think anywho it's um I, sorry i can't math right now i don't have a calculator um so started running good you could tell i was missing on a cylinder and it started cleaning up and the problem with this thing is that the oil dipstick is broke so there's no real way for me to tell how full the oil is so it's puking out you know got puking out there i thought this was a five gallon pan but i've taken out probably i think two gallons of oil out of it um, and I was about to run it again, and the pinhole that's in the oil filter that I'm waiting on getting replacement because Thermal King decided to use their pr proprietary M36 by 1.5 um, oil filter. So it's Sunday now. I'm gonna get that Tuesday. I can't run anymore. Um, but anyway, there's a pinhole in it, and before it was just dribbling down the side. Uh, there. And I'm like, I, I figure it's fine. I have something catching the oil, whatever. And then the last time I went to run it after draining another, like, half gallon of oil out of it to see if I could clear up the, if it's a blow-by issue or just me being an idiot and overfilling it, once it hit the switch, start button, and you could... As I was hitting, I'm like, man, I should probably put a, like a shield or something just in case it decides to go nuts. And as soon as I, it lit off, it started shooting a stream of oil right at me. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of bummed out. I'm going to have to shut her down for the rest of the day and deal with kid shit. Um, but anyway, way that, it's so far running great. The only thing I think I, I hate to do this because... This thing's built like a brick shit house. Is I think I'm gonna have to put an aftermarket uh, generator controller in this, um, just because the voltage regulator did a lot of shit that I didn't realize it was gonna do. There's a lot of stuff passing through it, so um, I'm gonna have to swap that out. Um, what else? I don't know. Well, I'm mumbling now, so I'll uh, head out. One well, qu quick shot down the throat of the beast, and eh, you can't see shit. But it was all coked up from having the oil bath oil filter on it. That thing is going, getting the hell out of here, and I'm putting a standard um, paper element on it because I don't deal like dealing with a coked up intake. Anyways, um, I'll see you on the flip side. Just a little blow by there. Not much, don't worry about that. And don't worry about the radio. Alright, a couple days have passed since I did any filming. So, let me bring up the speed. Well, I learned some devastating news I already knew that we had problems in, on number four. Did a compression check on it with my uh, high, high uh, calibrated Harbor Freight diesel compression meter. And I know it's, it reads wrong, but the front three have good compression. The back one has nothing. So, you know what that means. That has come off um and so we could look at damages um so i've learned a few more things there's two variants to this one there's a DI version and the si d 
DI 2.2 and the SI 2.2. Same damn engine, different applications. The SE is for like this one, and the DI is to run uh, the reefer units. They're basically the same damn thing, except uh, and the SE has a uh, variable throttle control. This one doesn't. So we are going to go ahead and uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and rip the head off this pig and see what the hell we can do about it. I'll, I'll film once I get the head off. It's if you're any if you're into this kind of stuff, uh, it's obvious you know how to pull the head off. Pull pull everything off. Do a circle around the head, loosen the head bolts, and um, go from there. So, see you in a second. All right, got the coolant drained out of it, got the injector lines off it. Those injectors are pretty much stuck in there, so I'm not touching them. It doesn't have a smoking issue, but um, the number four is that obviously. So, just so you know how I marked my push rods. Four is for the number of push rods back, and two I is number two intake. So it's gonna be that one right there. And triple marked, obviously. Now here's the kicker. This thing has says it has 13,000 hours on it. I am not seeing it. I have a feeling that this was a failed rebuild. Honestly, so. Let's get that head off and uh, see what's going on here. Yeah, I know you're probably worried about that just line catch on the the um, head bolt, but don't worry about that. It's gonna be my headache in like right now. So let me get this head off. I'll get back to you. All right, so I got the head off. Easy peasy, yep and easy. So I can tell you that's not the problem. That's not the problem. That's not the problem. I think this might be the problem. You know, with a little bit of shake in there. Let me bring down the hoo-ha a little bit. Probably has an eighth inch of play in it. So obviously it broke its uh, skirt off it. Oh, so that means um, this motor needs to be blown apart. Um, let me bring it back down up the toppy dead center. So, what my evil plan is, is I'm going to jack it up, because I really don't have a hoist that I could put underneath this, So, but it has a sturdy frame around this, so I'm going to rig up something, I could bring this, I need to bring the motor up, probably a good, have the top of the deck right here, and to pull off the oil pan to push out the piston. So, all right, I know it's getting dark. Let me back up so you can see the sketchiness. Yeah, it's about that sketchy. So, I started jacking up the generator, and um, I'm like, why not go to the top floor and make it so I don't have to bend over to work on this pig? And, um... That oil pan down there weighs a freaking ton. Let me put some light on it for you. I think this uh my light's dying. But yeah, there's some there's some goobers in there. Like I was saying, this motor looks pretty damn clean for having fifteen thousand hours on it. I think it has somewhere like a thousand. But I'm just a scientist. What do I know? Do 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 So here is the carnage on this pig. The small end of the rod looks like it got a little hot from um, being non-operational. Um, <clears throat> one thing that does concern me, I, I'm, I'm probably going to end up replacing the rod anyway, is there's a little heat down in the rod right there and I don't like that very much so 
I think I saw a used rod and piston on eBay. I know you're someone's already going down there and you know raising hell. Oh, you can't do that. It's like, oh yeah, I can. I mean, have you seen the stuff they do in that Pakistani channel? They do some freaking um, questionable shit over there, like uh, uh, no torque wrench rebuilds. I mean, I promise I'm gonna use a torque wrench on this pig. But it's definitely gonna need new piston, new piston rings. But uh, definitely gonna reuse those bearings. Um, my spidey senses say don't mess with the other four or other three. It's fine. But that one, I'm gonna take uh, one of the three thingies and fucking do the and clean it all out. And uh, yeah, just send it. It's not like this is gonna be, you know. Um, the thing that's gonna power the world at the at the end times, just my house. So um, I think it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna I've already hosed this down with WD-40. As you can see, it's wet. Um, gonna put something over this, like a plastic bag over this, over the oil pan. Um, cry about that. Take the part number off that, and um, go to the flea bay and uh, order some stuff from the usual dirt bags. See you in like a like probably a goddamn month or something. I know. I'm sorry, but to me it's gonna be a month for you. We'll use a time machine for you. That it's gonna just be like that. Promise. And boom.